Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to give you a sample project to help you use a login with the Google login. So I got a request from Raphael. He wanted to see a Spring Boot project back in with a React front end. And so this project, I put a little bit more time into it than just that basic connection. This one will give you a template that you can use and I'm gonna show you how you can set up the initial pieces for the Google login. So you're gonna have to go to this link that I'll show you and you're going to have to set up a sample project and it's going to give you a client ID and a client secret. Then we're going to put that in our Spring Boot project and then also make request to that project from our React project. So let's go ahead and jump into the code now. To get started with a simple login for, for instance, Gmail, uh, you can go to this link that I have at the top, which is console.cloud.google.com slash API slash credentials. Basically, what we're going to do is just sign up to be able to use Google's cloud platform uh, login services. So you're going to go to that link and then we're going to go ahead and say that we agree. And now let's go ahead and click create project. So I'm going to go ahead and just call this react login. And then create. We'll go ahead and close this notification just by clicking off of it. And so now what we're going to end up doing is adding an OAuth 2.0 client ID. And now let's go ahead and click create credentials so that way we can set up our login. You're going to select the OAuth client ID. Oh, it looks like we first have to configure our consent screen, so let's do that first. Now you can select either of these depending on your use case. Uh, we'll just go ahead and select external for this one because I imagine most users will want to set up something where other people can log in, not just people within their organization, and you'll click create. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and name it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call this React Login Sample, and the user support email that I will use will be the one that I'm using for this account, which is not another tech tutor at gmail.com. All right, and let's fill out some of the rest of this. You know, for your use case, I imagine you're going to end up filling out more of these items. But for what we're doing here, just as an example, we can skip most of this. We'll go ahead and put that same email. And then save and continue. Now let's go ahead and add some scopes. Uh, the two main scopes I'm going to showcase in this one are basically just using email and profile. And I'll click update. Now we're going to go ahead and click save and continue. And for the test user, I will add that same email account that I've been reusing here. Now click save and continue. Here's the summary of everything I've added. So now click back to dashboard. So now let's go ahead over to look at credentials. Now let's try again to do our OAuth to client. So we're going to do a web application. We'll just leave it as web client one. And now we need to start adding these redirect URIs. There's two redirect URIs I'm going to add. So I'm going to add the one for our React client and also the redirect URL for our Spring Boot application. And then I'll click Create. And now here's the important part. We're going to use this client ID and client secret so that way we can actually log into our application that we just created uh, here on Google Cloud Platform. So keep track of these. You're going to want to use them. This is how you basically enable your app to utilize this and you're going to store it in basically a configuration for your app. Uh, if you're on a server, there's different ways to store secrets and then for our local uh, you could store it in a local config file. I would just suggest not publishing it to anything uh, public like GitHub. But for my use case, I'm, I'm probably going to just delete this after. So it's not a big deal for what I'm doing right now. 
Now let's go ahead and update where the client ID and client secret goes. So you copy these values. I already basically paused my recording to go ahead and do this, but what you're gonna do is in your spring project, you're gonna go into, for instance, your application YAML and set the client ID, which I put here. And I also put those scopes that I had set as well, as well as the usual redirect URI. And then you're going to want to set your password as an environment variable. So I just went ahead and put that right here. So now if we go ahead and click run, You'll see that it went ahead and started up. Everything looks good so far. I also already spun up a MongoDB using Docker before this, so I'll, I could revisit that. I've done it in a bunch of other videos, so if you really want to have more of a deep dive into how I spin up databases, I suggest taking a peek at my other videos, or if you have questions, put them in the comments. So now that I've done that, let's go ahead and go back to our browser. And I've already been running the React client, so that'll already be up and running. Now let's go ahead and check out the app. So over here is my very basic login client screen, and you'll go ahead and click login. And right now I've got it set up to only log in with Google, so go ahead and click that. It's telling you that it wants to continue to use React login sample. That's because that's what we just set up and then you're going to select a account that you want to log in with so i already had logged in with this account before during my just setup for this video so i'll go ahead and use my sample account here and you can see that what it did is it pulled my name from my account as well as the picture i set there so you can get different information based on the scope of what you've requested so again we were saying we wanted the email details and the profile details and then you can also expand this to do such as like a Facebook logon, or there's other different ways you can do single sign on with other applications as well. This is just a really quick way to get you set up to log in using Gmail. Now let's take a moment to go over some of the code that I use to get this set up. And then if you have any questions about more specific code, I'm gonna also put all this on my GitHub so that way you can look through it all. But if there's any questions you want about something very specific, let me know. I just don't wanna make this video too long. I wanna be kinda of quick and to the point to help get you started with a simple login with a React front end and a Spring Boot back end. All right, now back in this project, I already showed this application YAML, but yeah, this is a very key portion of the project in order to connect to that Google Cloud platform. Then in my Docker Compose, as I was saying, I was spinning up a Mongo database to store our user data. Then this is the important pieces you're going to want in your POM file. So I'm actually using a JSON web token to try to store essentially that the fact the user has been logged in for authentication, so I'm not having to constantly go grab that authentication. You have your standard Spring Boot Starter web. Now, Spring Boot Starter security is important because that's going to help you pull in that OAuth login and basically set these properties that were in this application YAML. And then additionally, you want to bring in the OAuth to client Spring Boot Starter as well for that. And then lastly, the other really important one, since I am using Mongo database to store that user information, I need that Spring Boot starter data Mongo. Over to the security config. I have a few different pieces of information here. So basically I have some custom overrides just to help you with doing different pieces of the authentication. You don't necessarily have to do all these. There's a lot of flexibility for Spring security, uh, but basically the important part here is I'm also setting up this custom OAuth 2 user service uh, right here and doing some wiring and more configurations for the OAuth login. The reason why this is being done is so that way I have an easier way to register new users, save them in the database, and update the users as well. And then there's some other pieces here, just again, not as important. You're pretty flexible how you can do this. This is again, just an example. This is some code that I found online mixed with some of my own code. Um, but again, it's all just for an example for how you can get started with Gmail login. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the client. 
All right, over here in the client, I'm gonna show you a few of the more important files. The rest of the stuff is kind of just polishing. I added so that way I could showcase a basic login screen. Basically, you're going to want to install Node and then you will want to use the boilerplate uh, project creation. You don't have to, but this is what I did for this project and then I just kind of edited the files. After that, to run it, you're just going to say npm start as long as you're in the same directory as the package JSON. And then here's some additional references you can look at regarding Node and also that project creation command right here. So looking at the JSON file, basically this is similar to your POM file and your Java project. It has different dependencies. Uh, the main ones I'm using is Bootstrap for styling and then you have your standard React libraries, React DOM, Router DOM, a lot of this stuff is for navigating different pages. And then I also have this React alert to show different alerts on the screens. And the React scripts and Web Vitals automatically came with it as well. This is just stuff that that command that I showed you over here in the readme will automatically add because it's kind of the standard dependencies for a lot of React projects. And then you can also see here the scripts that are actually being used to start the project. So like I said, when you do npm start, it's going to call React script start and that'll go ahead and spin up your project. So let's go ahead and look at this app.js. This is kind of like the base file for your React project. In here, there's different things. Uh, the most important part is that I have different ways to store if the user has been authenticated or not. If the current user has been logged in, I'm going to store that in the current user. The, also a loading uh, Boolean to know if I'm loading the page still or not. And then I'm also utilizing a local storage to basically store their access token. So that way the client has it stored in basically a cache while they're logged in until they log out then we remove that access token now over here in api utils this is how i am actually calling my spring boot server there is the common fetch method that is just in javascript so you could read up on this it's, it's pretty standard method but basically i am calling my Spring Boot URL, which is set up in my constants file. So when I want to do different requests, you can see, for instance, this request right here, which is to get the current users. I am using my API base URL, which is in my constants file, and then slash profile and saying that I want to call a get on that. And then over in my login page, over here, just different setup for the OAuth2 logon. So you could see that I am setting the history. This is kind of if you push the back button, it'll take you back to certain places. And then also uh, redirect for when you log in successfully, as well as I am setting up that button that you can click to use the Google login. And then additionally here is that Google auth URL. So this is the URL you will need in order to hit the Google login uh, server essentially to hit that client that you set up. So now let's go ahead and take a look over at that constants file. So over in my constant file, I am storing different values. The really important one here is the Google auth URL. So basically this URL that you are hitting is actually going to be in the Spring Boot project. And then the Spring Boot project, because of the dependencies in the POM, will go ahead and funnel that back over to the Google servers. So the API base URL right here is actually coming from my keys file and that is over here. So for my dev keys, the redirect URI is to redirect to my client, which is running on 3000. And then also my Spring Boot project is running on 8080. So the API again is 8080. So it's hitting that Spring Boot project going to that URL that is set up because of our POM dependencies. And then it's basically telling it, I want to redirect to localhost 300 OAuth2 slash redirect. So again, this has kind of been a fast walkthrough. I don't want to take up too much time. Really, this was just to show you a sample project of how you could do login and how you can call your Spring Boot project from your React project. If there's any parts of this video that you would like me to do a deeper dive into, please let me know. If there's any different of these different files that you'd like to hear more about, we can also go through those as well. But 
More importantly, this should be a great starting point for you and you should be able to use this project to kind of build off of and do your own uh, login for whatever your app might be. And if you like this video, please take time to like and subscribe for future content. If there's any other content you'd like to see in the future, please let me know.